Hello and welcome back. This is episode 41. Um, the last video got cut off a little bit early. So what I want to do in this video is quickly finish up the end game scenario. So what what happened before when we when we end the game it brings up a menu that says resume and quit. Um, I'm going to change resume to say um, continue. I think that makes more sense because it is bringing them back to the main menu. So I'm going to go into the night scene, canvas, pause, resume, and change the text on this to say continue. Like that. And now when we play the game, uh, once we die, it should make a little bit more sense. Alright, so the mouse came back, now we can continue or quit. Um, if we hit continue, it takes us to the main menu. And I noticed that sometimes when we go back, the cursor is locked in the center of the screen. So let's open up the Modern Develop project. And the cursor shows up, but it's sometimes still locked uh, on resume. So we just need to make sure uh where was that oh it was here the, so th this is when we when we go to the main menu uh we want the cursor to be visible and we also want cursor dot locked to be false and that way the person can move their cursor around And th this isn't just a boolean value; it's actually a cursor dot. It, it's it's a cursor lock mode dot locked enumerated value. All right, so hopefully that'll work. Now, if we go back into play mode, oh yeah, and then th uh, one more thing that we need to fix is when Axon is dead, if the player collides with them, uh, it still calculates a hit. So we want to just make sure that doesn't happen if Axon is dead. So when dead is false, uh, we do damage, and when dead is true, we want to bail out of the attack. And we can put that in update. Actually, that's already in update. Uh, I was testing this out off camera, and it seemed like my character ran over the enemy's dead body and it killed the player. So I'm not sure why that would have happened, because uh, that shouldn't that shouldn't be happening here. Um, I'm I'm just gonna assume that I got killed by a second enemy, and I actually I actually misinterpreted it earlier. All right, so let's try this out. Wave one. I know you guys can't hear it, but the music is kind of awesome right now. Die! Ah. Killed one. Alright, so that one killed me. Uh, we can continue or quit. Let's quit. Oh yeah, and the quit button doesn't actually do anything because we are in the editor. Um, if this was a standalone application, it would actually quit out of the game. And we can click continue. That takes us back to the main menu. And very frustratingly, the cursor is still locked. Um, that's probably because I made a typo here. Menu control. Aha. Well, that is obviously the issue. Cursor locked should be set to none. And now we have to verify one more time. Sorry about that. 
So the game starts, we get killed, we click on continue, and now the mouse can actually move around again. Start game, and we're back in. Alright, so um, the next thing I want to do is make the scene even darker. Uh, so I'm just going to disable this, this directional light. And now that the moon that was previously up there is now gone, and everything is pretty much pitch black. Uh, I think I'm even going to make the skybox darker. To do that, I go into lighting, select my skybox, and then as long as we have the project window open, we can just click on that and it'll it'll find it for us. Then go back into the inspector, and I'm just going to make this even darker. Bring down the atmospheric thickness. Now it's, now it's almost pitch black if you look straight up. Go back into play mode. Yeah, I like that much better. And I want to see if there's any sort of uh, light being diffused in our flashlight. Yeah, I made it... Whoops. I made it kind of this yellow color. I think that's... It's, I think it's throwing off the colors in our game, so I'm just going to change it back to pure white. Yeah, that's much scarier. <laughs> that looks awesome. Yeah, I think this has really come a long way. So now, um, I want to improve the scene even more. I, I think uh, I think we have a long way to go before this scene really pops out. So let's bring the light back up so we can see it. And I want to I want to try my hand at using the grass again. So I'm going to click on the terrain, go into terrain details. It's this uh, flowery one here. Add grass texture, and we want. Um, something out of the standard assets. Environment, terrain assets, billboard. And we're just going to try this one again. Add. We'll see how it looks in the dark. So now that we have this added in, I'm going to increase my brush size and just paint it everywhere. Like that. Uh, now disable the light and go back into play mode. You know, that's really not bad. Um, I definitely like the way the grass looks better now that it's in the dark. Uh, but I think there's a bit too much of it. So we're, we're definitely on the right track. So I'm clicking on the train, going back into the inspector, and you can shift click to delete. So I, I just I painted it on, uh, like paint it really thick, and then you can go back over and sort of thin it out. It seems like it paints faster than it subtracts. I guess it depends on how fast you move the mouse, though. Alright, so now we've got some variable thickness of the grass. Go back into play mode. Oh yeah, and we have to make sure the direction light is off. Man, that just looks terrible. I, I really hate the way this default grass looks. Um, I'm going to cut this video off here, and I'm going to look into... Look into finding different types of grass. Uh, I'll let you know what I find.